Hi, my name is Dr. Philip Alexander, and welcome to the World Revolution podcast, where I'm with Andre Arellano. Say hi, bro. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, this is a guy that I met through the IST program with Brandon Bozart, and he's completely heart-centered, completely genuine. Um, real grateful and honored to, that you're on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm excited to, to join you. Uh, so, yeah, we talked about this, and uh, we thought we'd do this little dance at the start since you're from the Bay Area. Oh, well, you're from, well, you live in the Bay Area. You seem close I live in the Bay Area. So let, let's, uh, let's do this. <laughs> Tell me when I tell me what it is. Tell me what it is. That's uh, that's a big yeah, classic. That that slide that track. <laughs> you know, it's just one of those songs that makes you want to move. It's it's a classic in the Bay Area. It's called uh, hyphy music. It's just like you just wanna you just wanna dance. You know, you just wanna express yourself. Nice, nice. All right. Well, um, just a brief summary of what you do, Arlano. Um, Andre, uh, you're an Apple, you were an Apple geographical technician, uh, you became a graphic web designer, and now you do transformational coaching, and mm -hmm. from the Orange County in California. Yes, yes. And, I, uh, yeah, go on. Yeah, I was going to say, um, I, I had a pretty great upbringing like my family loved me um they took me places really were a unit a close unit um but never since i got so much attention and i got everything i wanted we weren't rich but we weren't poor you know we were like lower middle class um I never really spoke up and I really was afraid of public speaking. I was afraid of speaking my truth. Um, and they, they loved me so much that they would buy me anything I wanted, including food. So I was a chubby kid since I was like in third grade. And that really had an impact on me. And I didn't realize how, adverse of an effect it had on me until I started doing this inner work in the past in the past year year and a half and I used to really be down on myself I would have negative talk I would hate myself because of self body um, image you know I was unhappy I wasn't confident in myself so I wasn't I wouldn't take uh, courageous action you know I would let my fear prevent me from following my excitement and until I like was you know looking back on my childhood it's like oh I am not I don't follow my excitement because of this um, this pretty much traumatic event and I didn't think it was trauma because I I thought trauma was like you know when people have are sexually abused or something horrific happens but like trauma is on a scale you know trauma is any unfinished experience and I never went back to when I was a child and apologized to that inner child for being so rude and so you don't mean so until i did that and actually like felt that little kid in me like being hurt i uh i was able to heal that part of me and um you know i i was able to go to school and get a degree you know i had to move away 
I had to um, pursue what was exciting at the time. And for me, that was geography. And with geography, I, I knew I wanted to, my dream was to work at Apple or Google. And I ended up getting the job at Apple. And I was doing geographical information systems, which, um, which what that means is I was working on their maps application, trying to optimize it. And a year, a year to uh, a year and a half, I, I realized that this is not my calling. Like I love learning about the world and how it functions and um, learning about cultures and people. But doing something in front of a computer that is not fulfilling, I knew I did not want to do for the rest of my life. So I decided to step away and figure it out. I didn't know what, what, it, what I was going to do, but I, I just trusted that something was, I, I would, um, I knew the inner compass in me would guide me to wherever it is that my soul uh, needs to go. So I, I was introduced to these people who like taught uh, millennials how to start their own uh, business doing online service, uh, online services like web design, graphic design, um, being a PA and that was that was fascinating. Fascinating. I really liked it, but once again, it, it I didn't I didn't know um, coaching was a thing you could do. And when I was doing the design business, I came across my coach, and I started working with him. And um, like a couple months into working with him, I fell into my first depression or into depression um, because I started doing inner work and I, I was looking at the pain from my father and my sister and I took it on and I that in couple with I knew deep down that I'm, I was destined for greatness like there's something else that I need to do and went through last summer depressed and it wasn't until I, I did a, I went to a retreat to my coach's retreat and there was an exercise where we got in a circle and they asked us this question. It was, what's holding you back from your truth? And my body already knew what the question was going to be. Like, it was already preparing itself. And instantaneously, like, I broke down and started crying. Like, I've never cried before as an adult. And it was the fear of judgment and the fear of abandonment that was holding me back from doing what I wanted to do because... I had gone to school um, to get a degree. I got my dream job, and I started this this design business. And um, it's it's not where I wanted to be. And I wanted to like prove it to myself that I could have this successful business before I even step into coaching. So I that exercise made me relive that that fear and once you live through it once you feel it then you could transmute it you could alchemize it and you just like shed that layer so that made me be 100 percent myself i was finally free to speak my truth and just follow my highest excitement because when you're yourself there's going to be things that excite you, but their fear might show up and it's going to try to prevent you. But when you're yourself, you're like, I might fail at this, but that's okay. Cause it's, it's gonna, it's what's exciting and it's what's going to fulfill me. 
so after that, that's when um, I'm like, what am I passionate about? Spirituality, human optimization, and personal development. And my purpose in life is to fully live it, to actualize who I truly am in this life. And the most aligned expression for that purpose, for my purpose, is being a life coach. Because I could be fully myself and I could help others truly be themselves as well and live their best life. And that's how I got here. Uh, what, what came to my mind was, um, I wanted, what, what, do you, what would you say was the problem that, um, because because all of us we have these fears right and um i would say it, it comes from just as you said from our childhood and from our families and just gets passed on in a way from generation uh, right what what would you say were your triggers in your life that actually like what were, where were those fears coming from would you say so the it was the fear of judgment and the fear of abandonment and the fear of judgment mostly was coming. Uh, well, it wasn't coming from them, but it was all self-imposed. So I was thinking that my peers and friends, friends from college were going to judge me for stepping away from uh, what I studied to start my own thing. And, 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 and if I did follow that, and started this business and failed at it, I was super afraid of people like, not that they were gonna do it, but like pointing fingers and laughing at me essentially. Like, oh, like look at him, you know, like like he did his thing and like he couldn't do it. What Like what a loser. And it's like all these self-created thoughts that I was, you know, um, making up and the other is the, the fear of abandonment I feel most of us have because it's, it's ingrained in our DNA. Like when we were hunters and gatherers living in, in villages in like small groups of numbers, if somebody did something out of the social norm, they might be outcasted and they will have to live on their own. And surviving on your own back then, you know, that was like a death sentence. So there's this in, in society here in the States and in like Western countries, like you're, you go to school, you know, high school, they prepare you for college. College prepares you to get like uh, an office job. You know, they re school doesn't teach, us, doesn't teach us how to be entrepreneurs. And stepping out of the norm by, like, starting my own business, especially, like, coaching, you know, like, that's something that not a lot of people know. And um, it's something that could ha does have, like, a stigma to it. There's a lot of coaches out there, yeah, in all sorts of yeah. Yeah. yeah, so instinctually there was that fear of abandonment, like, and it, it's it's funny like saying it to you speaking it here because it's like my I have the best friends and like the most loving family there they support me in whatever I do as because they know who I am and I know who I, who I am and you know um, I'm a man who um, leads with my heart and speaks my truth so I know I'm coming from a good place and and now. It's like, I love this, you know, talking to you about this. Like, this is, this is what I'm passionate about. Was this something that when you were a kid, like, that you knew was, is it more like you had to go through all of these experiences to come to that realization? Um, as a kid, I remember in kindergarten, I drew, I drew um, this drawing of like, what I wanted to be and like in when you're in kindergarten, it's like doctor, firefighter, policeman, you know, like the basics. I first drew a firefighter because I like the color red. 
and I, I know uh, as a des- like with the design, like red, like is like very like flashy and like you know uh, vibrant. But I remember thinking that in like fifth grade, I was hearing the term entrepreneur, and I knew, like I'm like, oh yeah, having my own business that would be cool. And growing up, I would think about the things that I could do, but never was like coaching because I never knew what a coach was. I also was never into spirituality. Like, well, I take that back. I take that back. I was I was raised Catholic, and I would go to church every Sunday up until I was like eighteen. So, I was religious, and then I lost faith in God for like five six years. And now I consider myself to be spiritual. I believe in a higher being. Um, well, so I would. What did I lose faith? Yeah. Because my uncle tried to push me into a th- this Catholic group, um, and I was fifteen and fourteen, fifteen, and around that time, you know, that's when like we start getting hormones and we start like developing. So I was a rebel. I didn't, I'm like, don't tell me what to do. So that pushed me away, started getting me further away from church. And I started, um, I started losing weight. And then I started getting attention from girls. And I started like becoming quote unquote cool with like the guys, um, especially because I got a car at 16 years old. And um, I started doing drugs, uh, drinking alcohol and partying. And um, I just was hanging out with the wrong crowd. And I would see that they would like have nice clothes, have like the best alcohol, and they would get those things by stealing. And at that time I was like, well, if God was really real, then why, why isn't the world perfect? Why is there hate? Why is there evil? God must not be real because, you know, this would, we would be in paradise if God was real. So I didn't believe – that's when I lost faith and I started, like, just stealing and and um, I, I, I didn't believe in karma. I was like, God is not real, so there's, there's no karma. But my body was telling me otherwise. My body was like – when I was do those things, like, I didn't feel good. Yeah, like- uh, just hearing you speak about this stuff, like um, it's literally feels like my life as well. Mm. Um, went through the same thing. Like uh, parents came from Sri Lanka, uh, migrated to Australia, very like strong Catholics. Uh, yeah. I, um, I, I was in a way like I was ingra- indoctrinated with, uh, with the church and I followed yeah. religiously. But then I started asking questions and I was like, this is I don't like being told what to do. Um, right. And, uh, and then I ended up going overseas doing my studies in Europe. And uh, that's when I actually started to do drugs and party a lot. Uh, and, and I think it was when I got myself away from my family, I was able to see uh, my beliefs more. Um, yeah. I was exposed to more people and their beliefs and their ways of thinking. Um, right, right. Maybe I was seeing myself in a bubble of some sort. Yeah. yeah, same thing with me. I had to move away from where I grew up to really experience, uh, to live away from parent, from my family and to just experience like other not other cultures because i was i went to school in california as well and this is I'm, i live in california um but being able to uh, just live on my own and um on, on faith i i had lo- i had lost it for a few years and it wasn't until i ch- i transferred to to santa barbara where um, I was involved in this program led by the psychology department in which they, they took 22 students um, and they took MRI scans before and after the program. And for, for half the summer, on a, on a weekly basis, Monday to Friday, we would be meditating, 
doing yoga, taking leadership workshops on how to be a better communicator, how to be, uh, how to optimize the body, you know, sleep, rest, nutrition. And um, that really sparked my mind as to what was possible. Um, and in that group, I had, I had been starting to read spirituality and started following people uh, on the podcast world. And I got introduced to um, uh, psychedelics. And, and to be honest, I had a spiritual awakening with them. And I finally understood everything that I was learning. Uh, from the spiritual text, from the meditation, meditation was like, I got it. And that's when I like the fear of death finally faded away because I just felt God. And to me, God is everything. Um, back to like when I was thinking like if God was real and why is it bad in the universal sense, like there is no good or bad. Everything is just is. You know, if you take humans out of the equation, everything is, everything is, is just is. There, there is that dichotomy of like good and bad and black and white. So we could, you know, be able to create and play and have fun. But God is everything to me. Right. Yeah, l l let's expand on that more. Okay. Um, like what, what is actually this just is? Um, Everything is just this. <laughs> yeah, what is what is that? <laughs> it's 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 the it's the force of life. It's it's a force. It's which is the natural the natural uh, movement force of the universe is you know expansion and. Um, when, when we see nature, like when we see, when we see like animals doing their thing, is it, is it bad that a lion hunts down a gazelle? Like, is that, is that a bad thing? Or is that, is, is that just nature? Yeah. Like that's just the circle of life, right? Yeah. And to me that life is just it's it's there's good and bad for us to know how to enjoy life but if you were to take like humans out of the world like the the planet would be symbiotic right like it was just like right now we're we're doing so much damage to the ocean to our planet to our atmosphere and um there is global warming and there's you know ice age but the planet is just going to do fine without us. It's humans who have this, uh, who label things as good and bad. And we, I'm not saying not to have those things. That's good to have them. That's why we have technology. That's why we could do these things. That's why we could talk to each other. But we have a certain level of intelligence, perhaps that other, as far as we know, um, more than animals would right but um yeah there must be a reason why we're part of the ecosystem although we are part of this destruction right totally yeah um i had this uh question that was coming up as i was as you were talking and it was um our reality, uh, would you say there's some people refer to this as perhaps it's like a program, mm. like we're, um, we're, we're living in a program and you've done, a, I feel like maybe this is something that you've probably thought about yourself because your background is in programming. <laughs> um, yeah. What are your thoughts on that? You know, I, I, I heard uh, Elon Musk talk about this, that there is a high probability that this could be a simulation and 
maybe I don't know. I, I can't say that like I have a strong feeling about it, but what I do know is um, I see I view life as like a video game and doing this inner work, doing like plant medicine ceremonies, I got the cheat code on how to live life. And to me, that looks like having fun, con having connection with family and friends, traveling, um, you know, uh, having uh, a lover, having good food, hiking, yoga, dancing, like, I'm just here to enjoy life. So I, I see, I see life as a, as like a, this video game. I don't know if we be, if we were programmed, um, but I'm just here to live life. Like it's good to have these questions, but at the end of the day, I was like, let, let's just, let's just help one another out and have fun. Yeah. Fair um, what, what are your, uh, you, you've I've seen some of your posts and you talk a lot about how each color has a uh, as a meaning. Uh, yeah. Could you expand on that? Yeah, each color evokes an emotion, a a vibe, a, a mood. Um, you know, even in, in with like the chakras, like each color signifies something, right? Yeah. Um, and it, it's it's there for a purpose like stop signs and like you know um, lights and for you to stop they're red and it's red because it's it, it alerts you it's like a color that you can't miss right but red also evokes this emotion of love because that's what like the heart is is that's its color right and and that's uh, it, it, it has love, but it also has this level of alertness. So each color has a like a light, a positive aspect, and it has like this dark, more negative connotation. Right. And since I was a graphic and web designer, I had to learn about color theory because depending on who you are and who you're trying to serve depends on like what color you should use for your brand and for your website. Um, because that's going to say a lot about you. Yeah. Like if you look at, at least in, in America, fast food restaurants, they're mostly red and yellow, like McDonald's in and out, Carl's Jr., Jack in the Box. Yeah, yeah. They, they all have these bright colors because they're attention grabbing. Right. You know, whereas like green, green is more calming because that's what we see in nature. Wow. Like we see a lot of green, that's like calming, right? And like blue, blue is another calming color because it's the color of the ocean. But blue is also, it has this like sadness tone to it. You know, like, have you ever heard like, oh, like I'm, I'm getting the blues, like I'm getting sad. Yeah, yeah. You know, like that. Um, Black is like darkness, death. White is like light, enlightenment. Um, orange is like, you know, it reminds me of like Halloween. It reminds me also like it, it could it could be like, I was reading into it and orange has this like cheapness to it. Like there's some stores over here like Big Lots and some of these that like aren't, uh, they're, they're like cheap stores, you know? So with, with branding yourself, color, learning about colors and the, the, the mood theory, it's called mood theory. Learning about it will be beneficial for creating your brand because your favorite color might be red, like it was for me, but that, that is, that's not a, it's not a color that's representative of my business. You know, that's not how I want to 
present myself to the world. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's really cool, man. Like, um, <laughs> yeah, I would say like there's, I, I tend to um, find myself just thinking about uh, the origins of life and um, I'm, I'm always like, my head's always in that space. <laughs> Mm. sometimes I need to be grounded with it um, but yeah just like how like those colors like there's seven rays that uh, resulted in the creation of the world and how it correlates with you look at the rainbow and there's seven colors and it correlates with the colors as well it's fascinating right. and it's thinking about it now like if you look at the the color spectrum Red is on the right side, and it's the the longer wave frequency, which in the chakras it's like the lowest, right? And then as you progress from like orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, and violet is like the last one, and it's like the highest frequency. And then it's like you know it's like moving up the chakras, and then. Once you pass the color, you get into like the UV light, which is like even higher frequency. So it's it's interesting to like think about how it it relates to like the chakras. You know, it's like from low frequency to high frequency. Yeah, nice. Um, what is your a uh, little bit different? What is your uh, understanding of courage? What does it take to be courageous? What does it take to be courageous? <laughs> saying and if I can add how did you show up in your life to be courageous okay so my friend Alex she said it like in plain terms that like it resonated with me because it just did it's she, the quote that she said was what you want is on the other side of saying fuck it like fuck it i'm gonna do it like because i want to like this is what i am excited about doing i know this is what's gonna help uh help me in this um and in evolving into growing into becoming the person that i want to become and I thought like people were born like confident, you know, and it's really, it's really having the courage to feel the fear and do it anyways. And practicing it in time, you become confident in whatever skill, practice, profession you do is just, you know, repetition. And it's just having those like in the beginning stages, having the courage to like, saying fuck it but in order to do that you have to have this you have to shift your identity into being a person who has a growth mindset that you know that you you're not the same person every day that you can change little by little or even you know make massive steps every single day so you have to like shift your identity to having a growth mindset and how so that's how like i stepped into like this person now who um takes courageous action is this is just who i am and it, i wasn't always like this <laughs> but what i what i did have was like curiosity and i was curious about learning different things and it got to, like learning about spirituality and like the question of like what's the purpose of life like trying to go deeper into that and like what god is and that has led me to where i'm at now because that's what inspired me to want to try psychedelics because i've heard of the experiences that people have had in the past and they've had mystical experiences and i wanted to try that for myself and that 
that was also during these like ceremonies, plant medicine ceremonies, they were also a, I call it like a sacred technology that really helped me connect to source and shed layers that were holding me back from living my, my true potential. So, and, and another thing about how I take courageous action is challenging, challenging yourself every day in the smallest ways, whether it's brushing your teeth with your non-dominant hand, taking cold showers, the most important thing of all, meditating, you know, doing a challenging exercise. Those little things help you become healthier and, and help you believe in yourself. It's, it's, it's having belief that everything is going to work itself out. You're not trusting in the unknown. Embracing the unknown, yeah. Uh, you, you mentioned psychedelics a bit. Like, what were your um, uh, experiences with that? So the first one, the first one I did was mushrooms, and it was at the end of this meditation program. So I was already, I went in with a good mindset because I was meditating on a daily basis for six weeks, and this was at the very first time I, I meditated, which was. Um, four and a half years ago and I, I was hearing these people on podcasts talking about it you know like like Joe Rogan and Aubrey Marcus who I look up to and I was like wait they they don't make holes in your brain like that's so beneficial for you like wait they they were doing studies on 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 these medicines like in the 50s and 60s Wait, they're still doing them right now? Wait, John Hopkins and UCLA have done research studies? Like, okay, there's something to it. And not only that, but it actually is, like, if you do it the right way, it's actually healthy for the brain. Like, I know mushrooms increases gray matter in the brain. Um, John Hopkins did a study where uh, people who are addicted to cigarettes um, 70% of the participants, you know, got healed, their, their addiction healed. Um, mm -hmm. So my first experience was, it was like a spiritual awakening where I felt the connection to source. I felt the connection to everything, to every, everyone. And I just felt infinite love, like... I, I, it made me look at life. Oh, it actually gave, now that, that I'm talking to you about it, it actually gave me the courage to go up to my father and thank him for everything he had done yeah. to tell him that I love him. Yeah. Like it, the, the mushrooms made me look at the relationship with my family, my closest friends to open up to them because um, as a, a, you know, coming from a Latino, uh, background, men aren't, fathers aren't expressive emotionally to their sons. Yeah. So after I went up to him, after that mushroom experience, I came back home and like, I told him that I always wanted to tell him, that. I always wanted to tell him like, thank you. I love you because he's a very hard worker. Yeah. And I just wanted to express that to him. But every time I would back out, every time I would back out, but it was the mushrooms that like, it just, I'm like, Oh, if I die right now, I'm going to, I would feel really bad because I never got to express to my dad how much he meant to me for doing everything for supporting me. And when I opened up to him, he started breaking down and he started crying because he apologized to me for not being there enough. Right. And I told him, I, I get it, Dad. He's like, yeah, because my father never showed me how to love. He would hit me all the time. Yeah. And I, ne I never hit you. And I'm like, I know that. I know that you weren't taught how to love. And I also know that you didn't hit me. And you did the best you can with what you were given. And 
And as a kid, it was, I, I wanted you to be there more, but it, it's, it, it's, I, I get it now. And I just want you to know that we're, we're ending this cycle right now. So if I ever have children, um, I'm able to show them love now, you know, and now we could have this open dialogue of expressing ourselves, how we feel about each other. You know, your dad, never, your dad hit you, but you never hit me. So it was a step. You did your best. So like there was an improvement in, 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 in the, in our line, in our lineage. So, Ever since then, like, I've had a better relationship with my father. Um, but the, these, I, I call them plant medicines. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're drugs, but they're also plant medicines, you know, like coffee, Tylenol. These are drugs, but you can, it depends on the relationship you have with them. And for me, they're very therapeutic, um, very expansive. They get you in a creative flow. And like I said, it, uh, it really gave me the courage to open up to my family. Yeah. yeah. Just, just touching on that, because um, again, like um, very similar experience to, to my, my dad is very, um, he's found it hard to connect to his heart a lot. Um, and so often we wouldn't really, say I love you in the household and things like that it would be yeah strange to say that you know <laughs> um but and I started whenever I saw his behavior it used to really trigger me a lot um until uh I realized one day that everything that he went through before he I was even born I have no idea what he experienced I'm just mm. basing my understandings of him from my experiences of him, but I have no idea what's going on in his mind. Right. When I started to see, uh, see things in that way, I was like, wow, um, I just started realizing he actually had been through a lot in his life and he showed up in my life as a, um, well, with, with what he's had to deal with, he's, he's an incredible person. Right. Yeah, totally. Same, yeah. Our parents went through a lot, and it was just also like the, I was just those times. Like now, it's so different. Like we're we're like we're we're just getting better and a lot faster. We're like getting more loving and more open and at a like fast rate because we we're so asleep for so long. And now with the internet, we're able to like have these conversations and share to people like what's possible. Absolutely. Um, you, you've spoken about, um, use this analogy, like uh, how you can't build a house without a strong foundation. Right. What, what for you are the strong foundations in life? Yeah. It, it's, Funny that you say that because I was just thinking about it earlier today and I've expanded on the foundation. First of all, the foundation that everybody needs to have is their physical health. And there's five essential things that everybody, no matter who you are, needs. You need sun, sunshine, you need, you need to get that vitamin D. You need water, you drink water, you need good nutrition, uh, you need to, uh, uh, what's the, <laughs> that's the other two, I was just thinking about it, um, sleep, you need to have good rest, oh, and exercise, you need to move the body, so those five things, like, if, why, why are they so important, would you say? Because we're, we're animals. We have this physical body and that's just, that's what the body needs. Yeah. You know, in order to function optimally, we need those things. Yeah. You know, because you can, you can be, 
you could have all this money, but if you don't, have, if you're not doing these things, I wonder how you're feeling inside. You might be rich in the material realm, but not rich inside. Yeah. You know, and so those are like in terms of physical health. Those are the five things that should be everyone's foundation. And also, I, I talked about foundation when when you want to create a, a business and you want to be super productive, like you need to have an environment that is supportive of where it is that you're trying to go. So, and that's both a physical environment and an inner environment. And I, I usually invite uh, people and clients to um, look at their environment right now and see, is it a mess? Okay, then if it is, let's 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 clean it up, and then look at the things that you own. And if they don't bring you value, and they don't uh, they don't are they aren't of practical use, then it's time to either donate, sell, or throw them away because it's just taking up space. Yeah. So There's you know, like stigma of uh, being a hoarder. Right, and and I learned I learned this with uh, from the minimalist. There are these two guys, and they have this Netflix documentary called Minimalism, and they speak on like, yeah, only own things that bring you value. Not to throw everything away, but there's things that we could all get rid of. You know, like clothes that we haven't worn in years. Like, um, you know, whatever it is that is just taking up space, and it's like. You're clearing up the space so you won't get as triggered, you know, because if you, if you see like there's a mess, then it's like, it's like a direct manifestation of how you are inside. So once you have this physical space and you clean it up, it's like, okay, now let's go and clean up the inner space. And that looks like meditating, like there's no other way around it. Everybody should be meditating. If you say you can't be, if you, if you say you can't meditate, then I strongly suggest looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, "Okay, what's like? What am I doing?" Because people who say they can't meditate do have time to watch an hour of Netflix. Of course, you know, yeah. they do all these things, and all you need is starting out. All you need is or wherever you are, whatever stage you are in meditation, you just need like five minutes, you know, just take deep breaths and, and focus on that. What, um, yeah. What is it about meditation that actually, how does it actually help you? So meditation, mindfulness meditation, like meditation is, is the purpose of it is to be mindful. Right. And, Mindfulness, there's different definitions on them. But the two things that everybody can agree on is uh, it's to be fully present of the moment and to be non-judgmental about it. So just be with what is. And is the mind that what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and what it's not yeah. is not thinking because the mind is always going to think. So it's about becoming the observer of the thoughts. And the best way to go about it is to anchor yourself to a, to a focus. So um, I usually recommend focusing on your breath and setting the intention of if that it's natural to have thoughts and you see thoughts like clouds in the sky passing you by. And once you become aware that you're thinking, refocus your energy back to your breath. And by doing that, you're, you're strengthening your self-awareness. You're becoming, you're, you're becoming aware of your thinking process. Right. And scientifically and with the program that I was in, the, the, the MRI scans showed that it increased gray matter, you know, so 
you know, better memory, more relaxed, like less prone to get stressed and anxiety, better focus, um, have an increase in this belief in growth mindset. So it has all these wonderful benefits. And not only is it, it helps like physically, but also to me, it's like a spiritual practice because it helps me to connect to source. It's just, this, it, it helps me. I'm just being with the capital B. I'm just, because at a certain point you reach this, state of awareness where you're just you just are yeah. and you are not thinking that's right. and that's not the goal people are gonna want to if they hear this they're like oh, i want to i want to reach that like i want to like be with what is the, the goal is to become aware of your thinking and refocus your energy back to your breath that's that's the the goal. That's the win right there. Because little by little, you're going to become more self-aware and you're going to be able to take that into the real world. And when somebody says something triggering to you, you could, you know, be aware of it in the moment. And rather than reacting, you could, you could um, reply with intention. Thank you, bro. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, of course. Um, I've got a round of questions. Some of these are entertaining. Some of them are funny. Some of them are profound. Uh, do aliens exist? I want to say yes. I hope so. I want to. <laughs> I mean, the universe is so vast and... I haven't had any like extraterrestrial experiences, but I hope so. Okay, cool. Yeah. Have you had any extraterrestrial experiences? I have, yeah. It was it was in a way that I didn't expect. It wasn't like I actually saw um like you know a flying saucer or something like that. What I found was um that humanity itself uh, is just like an embodiment of spirit and that um, that we themselves may not just be human. Mm. That in our consciousness, this is what we believe that humanity is all that exists. That's all that we see. But if that, if that consciousness expands to think that there could be even more out there than um, our consciousness allows us to see uh, what else might be, and that mm -hmm. be that maybe a human might be even not just a human, mm -hmm. human might actually yeah. be also an extraterrestrial. That's fascinating. I resonate with that. Yeah, and and there have um, so there is a book uh, by Neil Donald Walsh called Awakening the Species. It talks mm -hmm. about how the soul itself just um, uh, it can morph itself, or it can either birth itself as a human being in service to humanity uh, to help, mm -hmm. uh, or and some perhaps they might may be known as light workers. Uh, yeah, is that the author who wrote um, Conversations with God? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, I love that book. Yeah, yeah, check yeah. it out. Um, amazing. Cool. Um, yeah, so I, I think for me, uh, my awakening started a lot when I had this experience uh, of seeing something like that. And that's when I realized this world isn't what I thought it was, and it's actually more magical. Um, and that perhaps there were all these things that happened in the past historically, even through religions, that must have happened and must be true. And here we are on the planet. Uh, again, to, to mm -hmm. special. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, what's your What's your belief about reincarnation or past lives? <laughs> believe energy is not created nor destroyed. Oh. Yeah. 
and with the plant medicines that I was speaking on, this journey never ends. But I don't know what happened. I just know it doesn't end. And I've heard, once I started getting into spirituality, I started hearing people talk about reincarnations and past lives. And I never dug deep into it. So um, I, I, don't, I don't have a strong opinion on that. But I do know this uh, mysterious thing called life always goes on. What about parallel realities? Mm. <laughs> I, I forget the name of the scientist, but he he says something along the lines of uh, anything anything you can imagine has already happened. Yeah, in an amount of times, and it's like we we try to understand like the universe is like an ant trying to understand what a satellite is yeah. and so it's like I, I I believe it I just like how do how do you prove that right yeah, you can't. but I resonate with it for sure um, what would you tell yourself as a 20 year old if you could go back in time with what you know now to trust yourself and to trust yourself and to just be yourself because there's so many opportunities that I let pass by because of fear and you know everything I believe everything happens for a reason so you know this is a beautiful journey that I've been on and I'm here talking to you today speaking on topics that I love talking about, but I, I would, I would trust in myself, to take courageous action. And that happens from being 100% authentically yourself. Um, and as a follow up to that question, what advice would you give to someone who is going through similar journey as you did mm. I would say again to believe in yourself and know that you can change that to to cultivate this this growth mindset because you can do whatever you want you just have to believe and have the persistence. And, you know, if they are going, like, struggling with life, it's have, a, have an environment and have a community to support you, whether if you don't have it and, in, in, you know, and locally, like, online, connect with like-minded people. Um, but what's helped me is having an amazing network of friends who are supportive. And also I'm grateful that I have a family that is loving and, you know, they'll support me in whatever I do. Uh, what three books influenced you most and why? Oh, I love that question. Um, the book that I recommend to like everybody and I've gifted to everybody is The Mastery of Love by Don Miguel Reese. He's from uh, Mexico and he's from like the Toltecs, which were like, I think it's like right before the Aztecs. And it's the, it's like the practical guide of, of relationship, of the practical guide to like the art of relationship. So it's how to have a relationship with yourself so you could be in a loving relationship, the partner, and how to be in relation with others. And the author speaks so simply and so powerfully, and it just, since then, I was, I was just trying to cultivate this loving relationship with myself because 
in order to fill somebody else's cup, like you need to have yours filled. So that one is like a must for everybody. Um, the very first spiritual book that I read was, uh, it was uh, The Power. And that was the sequel to The Secret. Um, I, there was a point where like, I hit rock bottom and I landed myself in jail. And from that point on, I'm like, I'm going to like do whatever I can to turn my life around. And for some reason, that book landed in, in my lap. And that's when I first started seeing the power of your thoughts. So I started being more mindful of the way I was thinking and the way I was speaking. And the book speaks on the law of attraction. And... I didn't fully grasp it because I thought I was like, oh, you just think it and it's going to happen. I, I was doing the thinking, but I wasn't taking the courageous action. But it did teach me the power of, of thought. And so that was the second book. The third one, um, and there's so many freaking good books out there. Um, whoa. Whoa. Right now, right now I'm reading books on like self-image and I guess I'll give two because they're similar but different. Psycho-Cybernetics and Becoming Supernatural. Right. They both talk about like on meditating on this life you want to create and this, this person you're trying to become and taking action on it. And it's like you first have to um, embody the feeling just of the power of the mind because then you're going to connect the, the neural networks in your mind in order to create the opportunities in real life for it to happen. So it's like write down and meditate on what it is that you want to happen and with real intention by feeling like excitement or love or joy or whatever it is that you want to happen and match it with that, that emotion. And within time, like those things are going to come into fruition um, and also taking, you know, that, that action. So I gave you four books. <laughs> Who is your biggest inspiration? <laughs> I have to credit who I am and where I am to Joe Rogan. You know who he is? Yeah, he runs a podcast. I, I, yeah. I think coming up for me a lot, I should check him out. So I started listening to him uh, six years ago. It was the first podcast I ever listened to. He was like the number one back then. Like it was the number one podcast at the time. I was like, oh, Joe Rogan. I I remember him from Fear Factor and I seen his stand up and he was really funny. Let me see what this is about. And he had a conversation with Aubrey Marcus, who's another man, spiritual leader that I look up to. And it just like shifted everything for me. And Joe has just gotten all these people from different areas in life, different, uh, you know, specialties. And, he he introduced me to like all these concepts and without him i don't know like if i would you know have gotten into meditation or yoga or doing the plant medicines or you know talk about human optimization nutrition everything and it was because of of his podcast uh what is your superpower my superpower is what's that or if you got a few <laughs> it's funny I've, I've been asked that question before and over the years I've really in the past like two years I've, I've embodied my sensitivity I didn't know I was like sensitive um 
because I didn't want to let my emotions out. But I could, I could um, really listen to people and listen, hear them out, and fully be present with them, so I could give them what they need to hear, you know, um, match them energetically. And that's why I love what I do because I am able to help people on their path wherever there is in life. Um, I love helping people. I love, you know, trying to get them from point A to point B. And it's really like just having powerful conversations um, leading with the heart and, and speaking the truth. Yeah, uh, your energy is amazing, bro. Uh, uh, thank you, man. Uh, yeah, it feels nice to always to be, I'd imagine to be around you, but even just listening to you. Just, yeah, man, one day we'll have to link up. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, last question. Okay. If today was your last day on earth, what would you do? Whoa. Do I have a full day? <laughs> yeah, you have a full day. <laughs> uh, I would have an epic meal with my family. I would throw in party on the beach with with house music and inviting all my friends over because I'm all about connection like I, I love family and friends and being around the people who light me up and I love dancing and I love music and dinner with family dancing on the beach and um, make good love to a beautiful woman. Yeah. That's what I would do. That yeah. Christian got inspired by um, the thing Brandon asked me that is like, is that what you would, if, if that was the case, why wouldn't you be doing that every day? Uh, it's, it's funny because I'm, I'm kind of doing that every day, except the last part. I don't have a, I don't have a partner right now, but I, I'm, I enjoy meals with the family and I, I dance every day on my own, but I like going out to, to uh, my shows with my friends and, you know, having a great time together. Um, Andre, thank you so much for your time and sharing uh, your energy and your wisdom. Um, as I said, yeah, incredible being. Uh, mm. radiating heart. Uh, yeah thank you brother the the things are mutual I'm, I'm i'm grateful that you asked me to be on your on your podcast is this a podcast or a video series yeah or both? i call it a video podcast okay <laughs> so the video podcast yeah man uh i love having these types of conversations man i hope uh you keep on doing what you're doing and just keep spreading that love and light that's within you. Um, how can people follow you and learn about what you do, bro? They can follow me on Instagram at uh, Ariano, A-R-E-L-L-A-N-O, Andre. And on Facebook, um, Andre Ariano. Um, and if you got one last message for this whole podcast, what would you give to our viewers trust in yourself and everything will turn out just fine we all have an internal compass just like birds know how to flock together and know where to go just like fishes know how to like go upstream and like you know go back to where they were born like there's this internal compass and it's by trusting it and aligning yourself to to what lights you up it's gonna get you closer to 
the path of fulfillment and excitement. Thank you so much, bro. And uh, you, uh, look forward to the next time we meet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, me too.